So tonight's a very special night for Grace House and the Way Ministries. So if I can get Joseph, Devin Derrick, and Daniel to come on up, we would like to present you with your certificates of completion. We'll, we'll show him. Hold on. Jo- Joe, you're first. Come on over here, babe. So this is Joseph, everyone. Say hi. I want to tell you something. Out of the whole time that I've been doing this, out of the 20 years that I've been in recovery, I have never had the honor of working with and loving on somebody more gracious, accepting, humble, and just a joy to be around. This kid came into the house and he wanted it. And I don't ever remember saying one time, Joe, I need to see you in the office. I don't think he got a single warning, consequence, nothing. He was just, yes, Jesus. But that's the reason that you're perfect, because you're humble, and you know. And I love you, and I'm very proud of you. And I got to say this, too. When people get ready to graduate from Grace House, I have them do an exit plan. The best Exit plan I had ever written or ever read. Very good. This is Devin, also known as Derek. (laughs) For his first month at Grace House, I called this kid Derek. (laughs) And the best part about it is he answered to it. (laughs) never corrected me he'd turn around and look at me and go yes mom (laughs) okay Derek was Derek was a hard head was lazy and a little stubborn in the beginning and then Devin came out. And this young man's true personality, Mom, you did a great job. He's very respectful and hardworking and a very loving kid. And he is a great dad that just adores his little girl. And I am very proud of you and to be in your life. Congratulations, sweetheart. (laughs) This is Dan. So Dan has been out of Grace House for how long now, Dan? About three months. And I'm going to share a little something with you about Dan. We... Um, have had a lot going on, and so we haven't had a graduation for a while. So Dan held on, and he's here tonight to receive his certificate. And he's a, such a success story that not only is he graduated from Grace House, he's moved out, gotten a job, doing what he needs to be doing, and he has become a faithful tither. That's huge. 
And I am very proud of you, Dan. You earned this, sweetheart. Congratulations. You know, the best part of uh, work in recovery is to watch restoration. Moms and dads and sons and daughters and husbands and wives, and that's the coolest part of it all. I look out here and I see lots of restoration that's happened. You know, um, on... Uh, was Tisha's pictures on her Facebook page? So Tisha um, has been taking some uh, family portraits and pictures at Grace House. And if you get a chance to look at those things, they are absolutely uh, breathtaking. We get family restored and, and uh, things like that. I tried to look at them the other day, and I was having a trouble focusing. I wonder what the heck, I can't, why can't I focus on this? And then it's, I was trying to look through tears. It was so cool. So anyway... Bless you guys. We love you all. And, and all you uh, guys and gals in Grace House, we're working towards that day, you know, when you graduate out and move on and, and restoration happens in your lives, and it will happen guaranteed. Uh, praise God. Amen. Amen. Father God, as they go out and as they've completed Grace House now and they're out into the world, Father, we just ask that you just continue to be with them. And when life becomes life again, because it will, we ask that you whisper in their ears where home always is and that they keep their eyes focused on you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. So I have a couple more Christmas scriptures. Is that okay? I actually even brought some. You know, a lot of people say that, like, John, like, left the Christmas story out. He didn't. I'll prove it. Let's see. I want to say something. Howdy. <laughs> Listen, if you guys or gals came in here tonight and you're anxious about anything and you're frustrated about situations in your life, if you uh, are struggling with issues, if Everything in your life just don't seem to be flowing the way it should. There's one piece of advice that I can give you that I think is pretty sound. What you need to do is take your eyes off the situation and look to God. Put your eyes upon Jesus. The reason is, as you behold him, as you look at him, everything else will grow pale and then you will begin to see the light of God. And once you see his image, once you see who he is, it magnifies in your sight. Do you understand what I'm saying? He is enlarged. The more you look at him, the larger he will become. Is he larger than life? Oh, absolutely. Is he bigger than all your problems and troubles? Let me tell you this. Yes, he is. Is there anything that oppose, can oppose him? Can darkness oppose light? Go home to your dark house and flip on the switch and just watch how long darkness opposes light. I mean, that's a natural thing. In the spiritual realm, it's even greater. There is no contest. There is no equal dark force to the bright. Listen, for every dark force that comes against you, exponentially, 
the anointing is with you. It is a polarizing effect that will decimate anything that comes and tries to touch any child of God. What you need to do is know who you are and know who your papa is. If you know who your dada is, then you know who you are and you know the rights and privileges afforded to you and nothing can touch you. Nothing can cross that bloodline. This is not something that's up for debate or anything else. My God is an awesome God. My Jesus Christ is most powerful. He is the creator of the entire universe and everything that is in it. It is designed for Him and by Him. And through Him all life exists. I just wanted to tell you that because some people get confused when I say I'm not religious and then I go on and on about Jesus. <laughs> you see, that's two different things. Because what man has made out of a belief system in God is something else other than God reaching to man. Uh, man has complicated things. We sang a song tonight, you know, about salvation and just coming as you are. You don't, the beautiful thing is you don't have to go through a bunch of religious, let me say this Okie style, rigmarole. You just come as you are, who you are, heartfelt with an open heart, and God will meet you at the point of your faith, and everything will begin to change. If you have a problem, the answer is Jesus. Somebody just say that right now. Jesus. Jesus. His name is greater. His name is sweeter. His name is more bright and more powerful than anything else on the planet. Just look at his creation. And the amazing thing is that all that he did, he did it, he created it with us in mind because of his love for the human race. That's why God wasn't going to leave us in a fallen state. That's why God sent Jesus. He sent us the best thing that he had. I'm going to talk about that a little bit, okay? I'm not going to hold you late. we got a lot of planning to do, right? Okay. And I only have like a five-minute sermon next Friday, so plug in. I'm going to give you 10, 15 minutes tonight. Ready? Luke 2.11, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That was two millennia ago. Changed everything on the planet. He was born to you, to you, to you, to you, a Savior. And when he saves, he saves to the utmost. There was a, a lot of things that followed this right here. I got, I think, one more scripture coming down here. But let's jump over to John because I want to show you the, the, the Christmas message out of St. John. Can I do that real quick? John 1.1 1, 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.14. 1, you ready? And the Word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You see, when the Word became flesh, it was the Son of God becoming the Son of Man. He was the Son of Man and was still the Son of God, but He was fully the Son of Man, yet He was fully the Son of God. He wasn't 50% God and 50% man. You guys hear this? And He was all man. And when he lived his life of 33 and a half years, just because he was God in flesh, he didn't have a special up on the things that he went through. In other words, when he suffered through something, he felt it just like you. And because he felt it, Papa felt it. You understand? 
I mean, and I think he felt it in a whole different way. Now, he loved his, always loved his children. He loves the human race. That's why he sent Jesus. But when God became flesh, that was a whole other thing. And God was willing. Here's the amazing thing. God was willing two millennia ago to come down and creator became a part of his creation. That's special. That's incredible love. I mean, I can't even begin to imagine in my mind, because when you really begin to think about the Word becoming flesh, even spiritually, even thinking about, not just in a natural mind, but in my spiritual thinker, it still boggles my mind. I believe that all of the heavenly hosts still are in amazement on this event that happened 2,000 years ago. You know, religiously, sometimes people want to add to what Jesus has already done. You can't add to it. You can't take away from it. Nothing else has to be done. What God accomplished through Jesus Christ in Him coming to planet Earth and going, living a life victoriously, living sinless, and then allowing Himself to be put to death in place of the human race, Nothing can touch that. Talk about a story of romance and the story of love. And Jesus, here's the amazing thing. He did it wholeheartedly and he embraced it and he wanted to do it. And the Father wanted this to happen. It's not something that they didn't have no other choice. The scripture even says that he could have called off the whole thing at any time. The scripture tells us in the saw a legion of angels and they would have come and wiped everything out and took them out of here. But yet he allowed the pain and the suffering in that last few days of his life. He, he, the, and it started with the struggle there in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he, and I know this is about his birth, but it, he was born to die for us and take our place. And I want to point that out right now. Because as the Word of God... He had to suffer all these things and accomplish all this so that we could embrace our Papa once again and be brought back into to the family of God. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Now back to baby Jesus. Can we do that? <laughs> well, maybe. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So what do we see there? Even though he was in the image of flesh, yet he bore the image of the Father. Can you imagine when he was in that manger there? And How many of you have had children? And you, after they're born and you look at them and you just, like, well, you just look at that. You see this baby, and it might be the ugliest baby ever born, but to you, I've seen a couple that were like look like little peanuts. Most of our babies were born like nine pounds plus. I was ten plus, you know. Anyway, forget about the peanut. I, I, that was like not even. That wasn't even nice. Sorry to all you peanuts. <laughs> but here's the thing: when you have a child. It's the most beautiful thing that you've ever seen. And you're in amazement because, because it's your offspring. It's your own flesh. And I remember when my first daughter was born. I was, it was breathtaking. It changed my life. But you see, God created the human race. But Jesus was of the seed of God. He had a divine blood in him that it was a brand new creation that was brought forth and he is the only begotten of the Father. You guys get that? And I, I, and I like to imagine this, that when that little baby was born there and, and, and they lay it, laid him in the, in, the food, in the feed trough, you know, wrapped in burlap. You know that's what swaddling clothes in the manger is, right? Okay. I, I just didn't know if we had a, any farmers here or not, but that's what it was. You know, humble beginnings. Ordinary. I mean, beyond, below ordinary. But yet, here he is, the Son of God and the Son of Man, 
all rolled up into one, the greatest gift that the human race has ever or ever will receive. And Papa looks down over the corridors of heaven and says, Ha! That's my boy. That's my son. He was well pleased in all that the word his son agreed to do in becoming flesh. And you know what? He wasn't the only one because all of the hosts of heaven begin to get involved in this. And even the earth itself knows that something has happened. This is an event that changes everything. Aren't you glad? Aren't you happy? <laughs> okay, I'm going to read to you. For God is love. In this, the love of God was manifest toward us that God has sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Now I know that propitiation is a religious word, or is a biblical word, but what that means is when He offered himself for us. He is the atonement, and that propitiation or the atonement is our covering. And what that does is that when God looks at his children on planet Earth, he doesn't see your mistakes, and he doesn't see your failures, and he doesn't see your shortcomings. Because when God looks at the human race through the atonement of his Son, He sees perfection. He sees children who is well-pleasing to him. That's why it's so important that we offer him up as the sacrifice, because then he is our covering. He is our high priest. Hebrews says that he has passed through the heavens the true tabernacle, and he forever will be our high priest. Isn't that wonderful? That it just wasn't for a short time and just for a handful? Because when Jesus did what he did, he paid for all the world, even the past, even those that were under the old covenant. He, had a, he dealt with them and covered them, and to the present and even into the future for us here and today. His blood, his atonement is still doing the work because it's for the entire world, generation to generation. That's powerful. God didn't leave anybody out. But it's depending on each of us to receive that. And it's simple. And like I said before, it's not a bunch of religious things that you have to go to. It's a simple believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And Romans says if you do those two things, you will be saved. Is that simple? There's no trick to that. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. That's pretty simple there. Because that's that that contagious thing that we just begin to spread. And that we receive the love of God. And, And... I was unlovable at times. I'm going to throw in at times because sometimes I might have been a little lovable. I was a heathen, but I was a lovable heathen. (laughs) But the thing is, it was God's love that got me. Because I knew who I was. I knew the things that I had done. And in spite of that, the Spirit of God still drawed me by His Spirit. And pulled me into His family. And revealed these things to me that was so amazing to me because when I wasn't lovable and when I didn't deserve forgiveness and when I didn't deserve all the gifts of God, he gave them to me anyway. And that's what his grace is. And because of his grace, we receive his mercy or his love. And he puts that atonement over us. And so once you receive that, don't go to God and tell him all about your shortcomings and your failures. Don't repeat your sins over and over. It only takes once. Somebody say once. Once. For all. all. Jesus handled it. 
Listen, there is more purchase power in his blood than anything else on the planet. Even if you cut a deal with the enemy, the dark one, even if you did blood and, uh, a blood contract with him, guess what? It's null and void when it comes up against the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus is greater. As a matter of fact, just like light and dark, the enemy can't cross the bloodline. He can't have you. He can't touch you. And if you surrender yourself to Jesus Christ, there's nothing that can take you out of his hand. I said nothing, and I mean nothing. Is he a great Savior? Is he a good God? Yes, indeed he he is. And so back to John. Is this okay? You guys getting this Christmas message? In John 3.16, I don't know if you knew this is part of the Christmas message, but this is the whole purpose why he came. For God so loved the world. Somebody say that. For God so loved the world. He didn't make any differences there. He didn't pick out one people, one tribe. God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, who, who, that whoever believes in him should not perish. That means die. Did you know that? So if you believe in him, you don't have to worry about death. Because you can't die. Did you know that? Did you know Jesus said, he who believes in me shall never die? But Lonnie, that's silly because we're, we all are facing death. You, hey silly, you got to know what death really means. You're afraid of the spirit leaving this body? Listen, that's not eternal death. Eternal death is being separated from God, not knowing Him, not going to be with Him. But all of those who are with Him, listen closely, are not in death. They are in life. That's why He said, I am the God of Abraham. The God of the living and not the dead. Because they were trying to say, those people are already passed on. Those people are already gone. Let me tell you, one, if you, tell you what. If you've got loved ones that's already departed, they are not dead. They live. Because anyone in Christ lives. You want to imagine a family reunion, kids? You have no idea. You talk about a Christmas party with no end. His gifts, we don't even really begin to understand. We don't even understand the things that he gave to us here and now in this natural because we will wait till things get so bad we will finally go to prayer instead of going to God in the first place anyway and receiving the things that he has for us. All of his suffering, most of it was done for the here and now. And then eternal life with him, which is so so far out of the realm of just making you understand. I don't even begin to understand. Uh, just a, a little bit of it. But j having conversations with God, it is so incredible. You know the whole thing about sitting on a fluffy cap cloud with wings floating around? That's silliness. It really is. I mean, we're going to be on missions that you won't even believe. We will not be bored. You can bet that. And God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So don't listen to anything that tells you God's out to get you, and oh, you're in trouble, and oh, you're lost, and oh, you've committed the unpardonable sin. That's a bunch of hogwash. Because, Je listen, if Jesus would have came to condemn, and he could have judged, but he didn't come to judge. grace and today is still the day of salvation that's why we are free just to bring as many people into this wonderful relationship with god through jesus christ and they can all be saved even those honorary family members that you're going to probably spend some time with before this year's out maybe the ones that's hard to set with and hang out with and when you laugh i know i'm talking to you but anyway <laughs> Anyway, you see, you've got to love them too because God loved you when you was unlovable. So love them when they're unlovable. And, and just whisper s sweet nothing. You don't have to nibble on their ear, but whisper sweet nothings to them about Jesus and tell them just how marvelous and how... All right? 
and have the greatest Christmas you've ever had. Okay, back to Luke 2. So that announcement came, and, and suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Do you know that God does things suddenly? And when God has, I've had encounters with God, that it was suddenly or immediately. It was like no warning, and, it, and, and there's not something in your life that like prepares you for an encounter. Up. And he does it on his timing when he wants to, usually when you need it and you don't even know it. And this is what happened here. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. This all happened because of the birth of one small child in a stable. And that changed the course of the human race. And it restored mankind back to his rightful place so that he could once again come into the presence of an almighty God and have relationship with God again. You are loved beyond your comprehension. God has satisfied all his needs through his son Jesus Christ concerning the human race. Do not hesitate to come and receive all the things that he's done for you. Receive the greatest gift that there is. At Christmas, if you, if you haven't done it, like I was saying before, there's no trick. All you've got to do is say this, Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I receive. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Holy Spirit, live in me. Thank you, Papa. Amen. It's a done deal. It's that simple. We have a communion table set here, and Jesus is pretty adamant about this. As a matter of fact, they were stumbling along a dirty road one day, and Jesus turned around and seen like about 77 people following him, and he did a corporate downsize, and he said this, if you can't eat my flesh and drink my a bunch of them left. There was a stayed. And so he and Peter says, where else do we have to go? Listen, when you're with God, you won't want to go nowhere else. But, but the, the, the bread that we have up here, or the cracker, that represents the blood of, or the bread, the body of Christ. The, in the breaking of that, represents his body that hung on that cross and that was broken for you. The juice represents the blood. And without the shedding of his blood, there is ro no remission of sin. But because he shed his blood, we are covered. And in receiving these by faith, we are coming into union with his death and his burial and his resurrection and receiving all the atonement that God has provided for us. God bless you and Merry Christmas.